Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. How are you guys? Are you guys at home now? Or some of you still stuck in the campus? Share my screen. All right. Okay. You guys have uh, gone through lab one, right? to make sure all of you have gone through lab one because today we're going to do hands-on uh, activity in PLC Fiddle. So, okay. We're going to start with a logic boolean exercise straight away. All right, so now um, go into your uh, internet browser, Google Chrome, whatever, and go to plcfiddle.com. Can you guys see my screen, the PLC video? Yes. yes. All right. Great. Okay, now go to PLC video and uh, if you have not signed in, um, you, you can see this, but I suggest that you, all of you sign in first so it will be easy for you to see. Okay, when you have signed in, go to playground, okay, not code school, playground. Have you guys tried code school? It's a, a bit different because it's like a tutorial, step-by-step -step tutorial. Have any of you tried to go to code school? Not trying yet. Okay, now in, uh, if you go into PLC video, you can see this. Okay, start button, stop button, moto, moto. I want you to delete all of the components. So go to other, other tab, and start dragging one by one to the trash. All right, let's do that. And I want you to delete all text, okay? Start button, stop button, and we'll talk. Okay, now it's empty. Your PLC video will be empty. All right, I have uploaded this slide in e-learning, so you can download this slide as well. Okay, I want you to do this um, straight away. So, first you have to build a ladder program with eight input switches and one output. So you will have uh, input one, which is um, normally closed, and then input two, which is normally open, input three, normally open, input four, normally closed, input five, normally open, uh, input six, normally open, input seven, normally closed, input eight, normally open. So you, you have to add eight inputs and then add output. Right, let's do this together. So I'm going to finish this. All right. Okay, you guys can see my screen, right? Okay, now, the first thing you have to do is to add text here yeah. okay you have eight input so add eight inputs first so input one and then make sure it's boolean add and 
then input two and so on. Okay, input two, input three, input four, input five, six, input seven, input eight. Okay, I have eight input and also one output. So output. Okay, make sure it's still boolean. Add. Okay. Everybody has done this. You can just turn on your uh, mic so I can hear answering you. Okay, done. Tapi okay. Ada fan lah, Doktor. Apa dia? Ada fan lah, Doktor. Bising ni. Oh, sorry. My fan lah. My fan? Okay. Bukan, bukan Doktor. Saya punya fan. Apa, apa dia? Saya punya fan. Iya yeah, ke? Okay, ada tutup my fan. Can you still hear my uh, fan or? Okay dah. Ah, okay, sorry Doktor. So it's not, uh, uh, my my friend okay je lah? Okay, saya yang friend je. Alright, okay. Lepas susah nanti. Okay, tak apa, ambil you jawab dekat situ je sebab I can see your uh, betul message. Alright, now you dah ada 8 input dengan 1 output. Okay, so we want to do this. Um, you can see my mouse as well, right? Okay, so on the left, you do not what input one is normally closed. So you go to coils, eh, sorry, you go to contacts, and then drag your normally closed knee, knee. Okay, when you see uh, the light, uh, the blue highlight, a blue highlight, okay, just drop it, and then this will be your input one. Okay. So normally closed contact will always be turned on when when it is off so if you you can see that you can change the status here on it will be gray off it will be uh, the current is flowing through okay when it's green meaning that the current is flowing through okay now you want to add input two so add another contact here so this will be your input two and then add input three then input six. Okay, make sure you choose uh, the right one. Normally open and normally closed. This is input six. And then input seven. Seven normally closed. Oh, sorry. Normally closed. So I will uh, delete this one. Seven and then eight. Seven and uh, coils for output. Okay, now kita nak add sub round. Okay, the input four, five, and eight ni dekat sub round. So what you have to do is go to other. Ambil rang ni, bawa kat sini. And bring input 3 again into the rang. And then add another one sub rang. Right. So now go to context. Okay, input 4 is normally closed. So just bring it here. And then input 5 normally open. Okay, so that is input 4. This is input 5. And then input it normally open. So it's a, another sub round. So just get this sub round, bring it here, and bring seven inside again. Right, this one is input it. All right. So what are dapat tak macam ni? Okay, ada ada problem tak nak drag context ke, nak ambil coils ke? So, no problem, okay? You guys manage to drag all contacts and coils and add sub round. Okay. 
Drag around. Okay, um, make sure that you don't add a full rung, okay? Just add a sub rung. Okay, the other rung ni a full rung. Macam ni. But you want to add a sub rung, so just bring this to fresh. Okay. All right. Okay. Semua dah dapat? Ini saya dapat dah. You got it? Okay. Now, if you finish this, you to figure out what is the logic relationship for the ladder so what is the logic relationship let's copy this one and okay what is the logic relationship um this is just a normal and or 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 good So we have okay. Now okay. okay, input one normally close. Input one, not because this uh, is normally closed, and input two, and okay, you can see this is or, so you can just do like this, and input three. Input for not, which is normally closed, or input five, and then end, input seven, and in, uh, sorry, uh, input six. This is input six, and input seven, not, or input eight. Equals to output. All right. Any problem with uh, the logic expression? Okay. So, kalau I nak buat. Uh, so, doctor. Huh? Do we need to simplify it or make it sign? Uh, make it shorter. That kind of. Okay. Thing? So, I, I cannot hear you lah. We need to simplify the. Uh, Tak simplify macam ni je lah. Uh, I input one, one, and uh, input one not input two. Oops, oh, sorry, I itu padam. So it's input one, not dot input two. 
dot i3 plus i4 not plus i5 dot i6 dot i7 not plus i8 equals to output. Okay, this is logic expression. So what does it mean? Now, um, the current will flow through this round. Okay, when this is off, when this is on, and then when either one of these is turned on, this one, or this one, or this one. So when input three is turned on, the current will flow through here. Okay. And when uh, input four is turned off, the current will flow through here. And input five is turned on, the current will flow through here. So either one of these can make the current flow through. And then when input six is turned on, the current will flow through, and the current can go through input seven when it's off, or input eight when it's turned on. And then it can turn on the output. Right. Now let's do this in your PLC fiddles. In your PLC fiddle, try turning on your output now. How do you turn on your output? So let's see, input 1 is off, so the current is already flowing through because it's green now. So input 2, we need it to be green as well. So you go to your tag list, input 2, change the status from off to on. Okay, just press input 2. So now input 2 is green. And input 4, is already green so the current is actually flowing through this round sub round here now uh go to input six input six we have to turn it on now our output is turned on okay because one two three four five so we only need at least five our inputs to make the output turn on all right let's let's try to change that let's turn off uh input Let's turn on input 4. Okay, this one is off. We change it to on. And turn on input 3. Okay, right now, output is off. Okay, when we turn on input 3, the output is turned on. Okay. And then let's change for this sub round. Turn on input 7. Now our output is turned off. And turn on input 8. Our output is turned on now. Okay. Okay, everybody done? Um, okay, great. Now, next. Okay, you already have uh, done number three. I want you to add an LED coil. So this one, add a ladder program that can turn on LED coil when output coil is on and input 4 is turned off. Right, so let's add another rung here. Okay, go to PLC feeder, add rung. I want you to add LED. LED, make sure it's Boolean. Let's add. So you have LED over here. Go to coils, you want to turn on LED. So this variable is LED. Okay, you want to turn on LED. Right now it's turned on because uh, uh, because there's nothing here. So the current can flow through the ladder and to the round. Let's change. Okay, now go to contact at a uh, uh, contact and what is the condition you want to turn on led coil when output coil is on and input 4 is turned off so you have two things okay you have two things 
Do we have um, output coil on and input for off? Then you can turn on LED coil. Right. So this one is output coil on. So it is a normally open contact like this. And input 4 is turned off, so it should be a normally closed contact. Right? So it must be on the same rung as the LED coil. Now, go back to your PLC fiddle. You already have normally open contact. Now add another normally closed contact. So this variable should be input 4. Okay? And the first uh, contact should be. Can someone guess? What is this? Output. Yeah, this is output. All right. Okay, now LED, my LED is turned off because one of these is not turned on, just input 2. So when I turn on input 2, my output is already on. However, my input 4 is turned on right now so my led cannot be turned on i have to turn off input 4 in order to make my led turn on all right everybody got this okay okay i give you like one minute to to play around with this and make sure you really understand what what we did After you finish uh, this rung, I want you to add a latch circuit for LED coil. So what does it mean by latch circuit? You can um, refer to the previous slide, L, uh, PLC Lab 1 that I, I gave you last week. So go to the previous slide and look for latch circuit and make a latch circuit for LED coil here. I give you three minutes to do it. Okay, that's the part. So someone, uh, can you share? Let me stop sharing my screen. Can I choose one of you to share? Open it. Uh, uh, Amir, you don't do microphone. Uh. Can you share your screen? Pop what? You can do it. So someone can you share your screen? Uh Saludin, do you do you mind sharing your screen? Uh, 
Uh, Webex is on the phone. Oh, yeah, ke? Okay, okay, it's fine. So, who's uh, Webex is on the laptop? Um, Lee Jun Yang, do you mind sharing your screen and show the light circuit? Yeah, I do. Huh? Yeah. You manage to uh, do the latch circuit? Yes. Alright, so the junior is sharing. Yeah, you have done it. So, uh, everybody, can you please uh, look at the junior's uh, screen? So he managed to add a latch circuit, um, but why are you making another rung for it? You don't need to make a new rung, you can just add uh, the latch uh, circuit to the rung uh, under output 4 and input 4. Problem. So uh, what Jun uh, Yang did is adding another rung and um, you have input 1 and input 2 and a latch circuit for LED. Yeah. All right. So this is correct. Okay. Thank you. You can stop sharing your screen. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, let's look at the second lesson for today. Okay, we are going to do counter. Okay. Counter, um, as uh, we've learned before, there's three, uh, two types of counter. So, count up counter. Oops, sorry. Count up counter and count down counter, right? And then you can also use the reset for reset your counter. And uh, when you add a counter you can see something like this so you have um, en which is enable and then you have q which is done not, and you have acc which is accumulated and pre your preset counter value so q meaning uh, that the count is done and it will turn on the count turn on the uh, the circuit turn on the connection where and it will be active when accumulated value is the same as preset value right okay i want you to do this okay you can clear everything in your plc fiddle you can just delete everything or you can just add around a bit better to delete everything and i want you to do this uh connection Let's do it together. So I want to delete everything. You can just delete like that. Okay, just leave your second round because we're going to use it. Okay. okay, now, I want uh, one input and then I want a counter and I want a coil named counter done. So, let's delete everything in tag list first. Now, add my input, make sure it's boolean and add. And I want a counter done. And make sure it's boolean and add. And I want a counter. So make sure this one is a counter. Right, and then press add there. Right, so when I add a counter type tag, you can see this uh, small triangle. When you press that triangle, you can see the status of that counter. So you have uh, enable, uh, you can turn it on or off, then you have counter done and accumulated value and also preset value. 
So you can change this, this preset value. Let's change it to three first, right? How you get that from two? Huh? Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I make a mistake. Uh, Sorry, are you, are you speaking to me? Uh, yeah, I'm speaking, but I think I know why. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, you managed yeah. to do it now? Right now, I want to add input one, which is a normally open contact, uh, and then another normally open count contact here. But this is counter Q. So counter Q is actually this, right? When counter dot Q, it means this. Counter dot en, it means this one. Counter dot acc, it means this one, right? So now let's add our contact and two here. And add your counter or oh, add your calls first. Well, coil will be here. And then add your counter. Go to time or count tab and get the count up counter and drag it to this first one, first round. Okay, you can see that highlight and just drop it. Right. So now this will be the input. This will be the counter. This one is the uh, counter Q because when the counter is done, it will turn on the light. Okay, the light is indicator or LED uh, <coughs> saying that the counter is turned on now, counter done. Okay. Now, oh, uh, uh, it says here set the counter to five, counter pre to five. Okay, now let me set it to five. Turn on input five times and observe that counter done coil is turned on. Okay. okay, right now counter done is turned off. It's not green. So if I turn on input for one time, turn on. Okay, what happened here is that the accumulated value is one. And enable value is on. It's not off because my input is still on. You know, when I turn off input, the enable button becomes off. <coughs> and accumulated is still one. So when I turn it twice, okay, two, now accumulated becomes two. Let's do it for five times. One, two, three, four. Okay, nothing happened when, when accumulated is four. When accumulated is equal to five, counter Q is on because now the counter is enabled and uh, counter is done and the contact here makes the coil counter done turn on all right everybody is fine with this now yes right okay so how do i reset this counter because right now it's on <coughs> I just have to change the value to zero again. Or I can change this value to zero or whatever. Right? That is how I change the value. <clears throat> and uh, now it says change the counter to a countdown timer. Okay, so right now it's count up. So now let's change it to countdown. So what you have to do is bring this countdown here. And go to the other, bring up this, drag this count up to trash. So right now you have a countdown timer, a counter, sorry, and change this variable to counter. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's do it again. Preset is five. Okay, let's see what happened when you press on, uh, input on. The accumulated value is actually minus one. So what happens if you turn on five times? One, two, three, four, five. So nothing happened, right? Because it becomes minus five. So what you have to do is actually preset the okay, let's let's do it again. Set this to zero and set this to minus five. Okay.
Right. So when you set it to minus five, the accumulation accumulated value is now more than minus five. The zero is bigger than minus five. So what happened is that Q is turned on because it says that the condition of Q is accumulated have to be well, the same or bigger than three reset value. So counter Q is already turned on. So it will turn on counter then. Okay, let's see what happened if you turn it on five times. One, two, three, you can see that the accumulated value becomes less because it's count down for five. Okay. Five. Accumulated value is minus five. Preset value is five. They are the same value, but counter Q is still on. <clears throat> now um, the pre the accumulated value must be less than preset in order to turn off Q. So add another one. Okay, when input is turned off, then now the accumulated value is minus six, so it's less than preset. Uh, the counter Q is off. Okay, the counter is turned off now. Okay, so that is the difference between count up and count down. The, the mechanism is quite similar, but uh, you will you when you will go into a uh, real application, you will have to choose counter up or counter count down, and it will really depend on your application which one you should choose. Okay, now add a reset for counter in a new rung and figure how to use the reset block. Okay, I want you to do this. So add a new rung. Go to time or count, add a reset. So this reset, we need something to trigger the reset. So we need variable. Okay. So the reset is to reset the counter. So you choose counter for the variable here. However, you need a reset button. So you just add a reset button. And it should be a boolean and add. So change this contact to reset button. All right. So what happened when the reset button is on? It will uh, reset the counter. Okay, let's uh, make it okay. Now the accumulated value is minus four. If I press this reset button, the accumulated value will become zero. Okay. So you can add reset button for counter. So anything in this Tab, okay, for counter, count up, count down, retentive timer, off delay timer, on delay timer. So all of this can be reset with a reset uh, block. Right. Now let's go to timer. So just like a counter, a timer will have it's enable tag and it uh, it has its queue tag which is done and accumulated and a preset tag however for timer it has an additional one which is a tt tag which is uh, timing which takes the time which, which accumulates the time um, and it has uh, three types is on delay, off delay, as well as retentive timer. And you can also use the same reset block to reset all timers, right? Now let's do some exercise. Okay, I want you to uh, delete everything in PLC Piddle and make this circuit. Can I give you uh, three minutes to do it?
Um, we do one to seven. What do you mean? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I want you to do this uh, circuit, this. this circuit here, okay? And then we can do everything else together. Oh, so question from Zheng Chuan, uh, must it must, so it must be exact with preset or can make it be lower or higher than any value? Um, uh, it should be uh, accumulated value more than preset value. Okay, sorry, preset value more than accumulated value. So it can be any value. So if you want to put 5.5, .5, it's fine. You've done this. Yeah. Sky. Okay. Um. Let me do it for my side. Right. <sighs> so I need a uh, normally open, normally open time on daily timer and an output. So just add on the timer and an output. So this one is the timer. Oh, sorry. Timer. When you want to add timer, make sure you choose Timer, then add. add else, timer, timer Q output. Okay, and then you need an output. Your output must be a boolean. Right. So input on delay timer, change the variable to timer. This one is output. This one is timer, timer Q. And timer is time. Okay. Now, let's... Uh, Set the timer pre for five uh, for three seconds. So change it to three. Okay. Now let's see what happened. Okay, when I turn it on, I stop. Oh, okay, right. You can see. Okay, observe the value at accumulated. So turn on, accumulated starts going up. When I turn it off, it becomes zero again. So it will reset itself. Okay. So when I turn on for two seconds, the output cannot be turned on because the timer is not done. So I have to turn it on for more than three seconds. Okay, when it becomes more than three seconds, then the output is turned on. All right. When I turn it off, um, the ACC value, accumulated value, is reset. So this is on delay timer. Okay. Now change the on delay timer to off delay timer. Okay, so go to time count, drag and off delay timer, and drag this out the on delay timer to fresh, and change the variable name to timer. So, for off delay timer, the done uh, button is always turned on when accumulated is less than preset. So, it will always turn your output on. Okay, now, when um, notice that when you press on uh, in the input, your. I'm sorry. When it's turned on, it will uh, turn on on the timer, so your output will be on. So when you turn off your input, it will start timing. And then when it's more than three, your timer queue will be turned off, so your output will be turned off, right? So it's like a delay to turn off your circuit. All right, everybody got that? 
Yes. Okay. yes. So this is a uh, off delay timer. Now, I want you to change it to retentive timer. So change it to retentive. <coughs> retentive timer. Okay, and drag the off delay timer off. Change it to timer. All right. Set it to zero again. And set three to three. All right. So let's see what happened with retentive timer. So turn on. Let's turn on input for one second. One. Okay. Stop. So the timing is not reset. Okay. The timing at accumulated is retained. That's why it's got retentive because it's re it retains the value of um, the previous input. And now, when you turn on the input again, it will add the now the value of accumulated. Okay, let's turn it on for one second again. One second, All right? So the accumulated becomes two point five. So it adds the value before. Now, when it's more than three seconds, then the timer will be then on, and it will retain the value when you even when you turn off the. Uh, on it will retain the value okay so to reset this timer you just add a rung okay. add a, a new rung and add a reset block so for you add a reset button as well make sure it's boolean and add a new contact, normally open contact. Oops. And change it to reset button. So the reset uh, variable block is timer. Now when you turn on reset button, it will automatically reset your timer back to zero. So accumulated becomes zero. So reset button is actually very useful if you have a retentive timer. Okay. All right. Uh, we have seven more minutes. Okay. Now let's go to application example. Okay. You want to create a flashing light. Okay. Can you see that flashing light? Yeah. yeah both. <laughs> so it's flashing red and blue, red and blue. Okay. And now you want to create a, a flashing light using timer. So you're using an on delay timer. Okay. What I want you to do now is to clear your PLC fiddle. Okay. Um, delete everything. And I want you to add two on delay timer. So one timer is called red, the other timer is called blue. Let's do it together. You can see the circuit in um, in uh, PDF, okay? So let's delete everything. Okay, let's keep my rung to three. Okay, and delete everything, delete everything, delete everything. When you cannot delete, it means that you, you still have uh, something here. So you have to delete both. All right. Okay, let's. This one as well. Okay. Yeah. Zero. So now you have a fault uh, contact, and then you have a blue and red timer, and then you have a fault light. Mm -hmm. So at that, so first you have a fault. Make sure it's boolean add, and then you have a, a red timer. So make sure it's timer add, and then you have a blue timer add, and then you have a fault light. Fault light. Make sure it's boolean and add. Okay. 
you, you have four of these tags, you know, add your contact. This will when uh, fault sensor. So this fault is actually a fault sensor. Okay, when when uh, the machine uh, found a fault, it want to turn the fault light on. So our fault light should be a coil, which is at the last part. Now I want to add uh, another contact. And then we want to add timer on delay to on delay timer. Right. So um, the first, oh, we have another normally closed contact. So for blue, normally closed. Okay. Oh, okay, blue Q, blue timer done. And then this uh, timer is red timer. And this one is blue timer. And the contact here is one is red Q and another one is red CT. Right. We just assume that when a uh, red light is turned on, uh, it will be. Uh, Red timer. A red timer is turned on. It will be red light. When when a blue timer is turned on, it will be blue fault light. Okay, this fault light can change to um, blue and red. So now go to your tag list and change the preset value to uh, let's do it one lah, one, one second. And blue timer point change the preset to one second. So it will flash red one second, blue one second, red one second, blue one second. And now, let's try doing that. One, two, three, press the fault light on. Okay, you can see that fault light is flashing. Okay, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Okay, that is our red and blue light. When it's turned on, it's red. When it's turned off, it's blue. All right. Everybody got this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, dapat? Dapat. Okay, great. So this is uh, one example of application. Okay, we have finished our lesson for today. And I want you to go to the last slide. Okay, you can... Yeah? 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 Oh, TT ni uh, timing. Um, uh, when it's when it's counting, it's not done yet. Okay, when you when you look at the tag list, all right. When I turn the uh, it's when I turn the fault light on. Okay, TT is turned on because the it's the timing is now on. Okay, let me change it to uh, five seconds so you can see it better. So it's five, and then blue pun five. So when I turn it on, okay, when uh, accumulated is increasing, TT is turned on, okay? Okay, when uh, accumulated stop accumulating before it reset, it will turn TT off. So it's like when it's timing and when it's done, okay? TT, timing, Q is done. You can see the status uh, on the tag list, all right? Okay, okay. That's it. All right. Okay, now, go to the last slide. I have included two links over there. So there's many uh, PLC uh, application examples. You can see the uh, puzzle, the traffic light, the uh, process plant uh, PLC example. So I want you to go through all the examples and try to do the uh, PLC uh, Programming uh, there. Okay. Before we end the class, I want you to uh, of course you have to sign in this feedback and then online class. Okay. It will count as uh, today's uh, attendance. 
Okay, go to the link and I want you to submit the feedback. All right. And next week, we're going to meet again on Wednesday for online lab. And um, I will give you your like a short project for you to be done with within group. Okay. So go to the link and submit your feedback as your attendance. Okay, do you have any questions about the lesson today? So, doctor, yeah, it's all, all this, uh, like the coin and everything, somehow represent a maybe a relay. Huh? Really? Uh. Yeah. So, this is like internal relay. Uh, uh, if you look at the contact, the contact is actually internal relay. Mm. Hmm. So, somehow, if we use a real relay, we can also do the program, everything like latching and all of this. Yeah. Actually, if you yeah. use a real relay, of course, you can do the same thing, but then you need to solder the relay, you need mm. to connect it with wires. Mm. Uh, however, when you use PLC, you don't need all that. Um, your wires will be very minimal because you only need, um, even the timer, you don't need a hardware timer, you just mm. need to use a timer inside PLC. So what you need uh, uh, from the hardware side for this one is just a fault sensor as well as light, LED light. That's all. Mm. The timer and all the latch are, are in software mode. Mm. Understand. Thank you, Doctor. Mm. So if you want to build this using your Arduino, um, of course, Arduino can have uh, internal timer as well. Right, uh, but if you want to do it without a microprocessor, then you need a normal timer, a manual timer, where you have to add to your circuit and solder it with your circuit. Okay, um, um, that's all for now. Uh, please, please submit the feedback. Okay, it's in the message. The link is in the message. See how many of you have. Okay, I have 16 students with me today. So I, I'm expecting 16. Oh no, 15, 15 students. Oh, some of your friends, I, I cannot contact at all. Uh, do you know anything about uh, Natasha? Natasha, huh. you can consider her missing. Huh? <laughs> we don't know. She went back to Indonesia, right? Yeah, she went back to Indonesia, but uh, currently, really, she's uh, unreachable for unknown reason. Uh. Oh, okay. I, I, in, I, in, I have a lot of assignment with her. Uh -huh. And at most of the, uh, I think all of it, she didn't attend. So yeah, maybe I just have to like statistic everything. Oh, okay. And I do like any um, student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see the student's name. Mm. 